Never let anyone use your Wi-Fi network. You should also not use any public Wi-Fi network like your hotel or library network because even if they are password protected, they are still very vulnerable to many attacks. Anyone on this network can listen to everything you're doing, they can see which URLs you're accessing, and they might be able to redirect your request to a website that they have made to steal your credentials. This applies to Wi-Fi, to Ethernet, to any network that you're on, as long as the attacker gets on it as well. If you're thinking to yourself, hey, I only use my Wi-Fi network, so attackers can't actually get on it well think again then check out my videos on hacking wi-fi networks that will give you an insight of what could happen even to your own wi-fi now let me demonstrate what anyone with access to your network can do let's hack your network a little warning before we start this video is for educational purposes only do not apply the techniques that you see and learn to any device or network for which you do not have explicit permission from the owners let's get hacking today we're going to be working with better cap better caps allows for a range of attacks on wi-fi networks and also on other low energy networks like bluetooth for example better cap will allow us to implement a man in the middle attack let's launch better cap all right we're on the first thing an attacker can do is launch a network prop this will allow the attacker to see everyone on the network and what device are available to attack we can do this by typing net.prop on this will start the detection phase and we can already see some of the devices that i have connected here to my wi-fi like my nintendo switch my samsung tv and my laptop now to list all the devices that we have available on this network we can go for network.show and this will give us a list of all the devices and their mac addresses and their ibs this will give the attacker the power they will need to launch the next attack which is an arp spoofing for an arp spoofing attack we're going to be using my msi laptop in an arp spoofing attack we're going to convince my laptop in this case that he's talking to the router and not to an attack so this way all the connections will be basically first directed to the attacker and then they will be sent over to the router allowing us to see everything this endpoint is doing to launch this attack we're going to use this ip over here of my laptop going to copy it we're going to set the arp spoofing target to this laptop afterwards we're going to launch the attack by setting arp.spoof on you can see that forwarding has been enabled and now everything that i will do on my laptop will be visible to me once i start sniffing the network we can start the sniffer by typing net.sniff on now let's do some stuff on the laptop all right so let's try to visit amazon for example You can see that we're basically capturing everything this laptop is doing. Check it out over here. We can see everything that's being sent as packets. And check this out. We've managed to see every link that was requested by Amazon.com, which is very scary. And this goes on to other websites as well. So if I was, for example, to visit Facebook over here, you'll see that I've basically managed to capture every link that this laptop is connecting to. But it's not only just the URLs that I'm seeing from this user, I can also see every traffic that's coming out of this laptop, which is pretty scary. So I'm gonna see props, for example, from Origin or EA Games if I'm using those services. And this will basically allow you to see everything that a person is doing just because you're on their network. You can see the Origin heartbeats over here. Those are basically connecting to the EA servers. But is that the scary part? No, not yet. The scary part is the fact that an attacker can now redirect your traffic to a different website than the one you have requested. Let me show you how. First of all, let's turn off uh, this network sniffer and leave the ARP attack on because we're going to need that for the next step. Clear this console a bit. Now what I'm going to do is launch a DNS spoofing attack. In this attack, I'm going to trick this laptop to go to a different website than the one that was requested by the user. I'm going to be targeting my Amazon. And for this, I want to redirect them to a website that I have made. We can easily start a website by running service Apache 2. This will give us an empty website that we can access anywhere on this network. And this website will be available on our IP. And our IB in this case is this wireless LAN 192.168.37. So if I was to visit this one, I will get this Apache page. Now let's redirect every user on this network to this website. So we can start now the spoofing attack, then a spoof on. Everyone who's going to visit my Amazon, they're going to be redirected to our Apache website. Well, let's try it out. Myamazon.com. You can see this, right? We've basically redirected the user to a website of our choosing. 
Now we can make this website a bit more complicated with beef, the browser exploitation framework. We type in sudo beefxs. If we actually manage to redirect the users to this kind of website, we will be able to track everything they are doing using the beef control panel. For example, I've got now a new session over here. I can see all the information that a browser can give away, but I can also send commands to this user interface. So for example, I can detect whether they have webcam or not. I can try to turn it on and I can check for a webcam permission, which is pretty scary. And that's why you should be worried about someone redirecting your traffic to a website that you haven't ask to go on well the stuff i've shown you today they are pretty scary i admit but we can actually do something about it. and that solution is pretty simple all you need is a good vpn that will protect your traffic and encrypt everything that's going on from your workstation to the internet so if i was to turn on my open vpn over here and then go on a website any website of my choosing for example let's go again to amazon you can see that i didn't capture any of that traffic here anymore because now everything is encrypted from my laptop the moment it leaves it and all the way. And using a VPN is not that hard. I'm going to show you how to make your own VPN in my next video. So make sure to check it out. Now, the moment I disconnect this VPN, we're back to detecting everything. And this basically proves the importance of having a VPN on your network, regardless of where you are, whether you are at home or at a public library. It's all the same. You should be always careful about who can see your data and who's using your network. Well, the message I want you to take home is never let anyone on your Wi-Fi network unless you trust them. And don't forget to set a proper Wi-Fi password that will protect you against everyone who's trying to brute force their way into your network. Thank you so much for listening and see you next time.